The Falcons are wrapping up voluntary OTAs. Mandatory minicamp kicks off June 13th through the 15th. And of course, we have training camp coming up in late July. So all eyes are on each and every position on that 90-man roster. But we kind of whittled it down to the secondary and kind of looking at a crowded DB room thanks to free agency and some other moves that the Falcons have made. Now, that said, Jarvis, Ryan Nielsen had this to say about one DB in particular. He says, this is a lot. There is a lot with him. Playmaking ability, leadership. He is a good teammate. The command of things right there, it's like, we have to have this guy on our football team. It'll be good for everybody. And the combination of things, rather, is what he said, that combination of things, the playmaking ability, the leadership, being a great teammate, teammate talking about none other than Jesse Bates. So that said, Jesse Bates comes to or came to, rather, the Falcons at quite a hefty price. So to me, Jarvis, that already said, there are some lofty expectations of him. However... Jalen Hawkins really kind of tampered it up and took it up a, a notch in his third season with the Falcons last year. So that begs the question of, so first and foremost, what did you, what were your thoughts about Jesse Bates, both when the Falcons signed him and also when you had the opportunity to lay eyes on him, at least on a practice field. And then part two of that is based on what you've seen, based on what, you know, the Falcons have expectations of him, uh, of him for, or with, what does that mean for Jalen Hawkins? I think that, you know, when you think about bringing a guy, first of all, when you think about bringing a guy like Jesse Bates in, you're automatically expecting that, that leadership piece, right? And also the experience, what he's dealt with, because he came from a, a Bengals team that was absolutely awful, and then they end up going on a, a run to the Super Bowl. And, you know, given a few plays here and there, they probably they had a chance, the opportunity – to win that game. So, and I think that that's what, you know, the Falcons were looking for when they paid that hefty price to bring him in. Like, hey, we're, we were we were bad or uh, average to mediocre team, and we're trying to make that jump to a Super Bowl because Ryan Nielsen was, like, the immense worst at all. Like, we're trying to win some Super Bowls. We're trying to get there, and we're trying to win it. So, um, I think that when you – those are the type of expectations that you – are, are that Jesse Bates brings to the on table when you talk about that a Bates effect, right? Can he have that type of effect on on everybody else, you know, in that secondary? But I think the the interesting thing, you know, is the interesting piece about that is when you think about Jalen Hawkins, though, like he's a guy that you know started you know all those games last year, and he was a guy that I felt like could be a piece that could be, a, you know, a, a, a annual starter, right? You know, he could be your guy that can, you know, especially, you know, dealing with, you know, the, the development piece because he was drafted by the previous regime. I think that, you know, from a starting standpoint, I think those days are over as far as, you know, being at that strong safety spot because Richie Grant is probably is going to bump down to that strong safety, which is kind of more of his natural spot, right, anyway. Um, and then because – you know, Jesse Bates, you know, he's at his best when he's that that one high safety look and, and, and out there playing free safety or center field, so to speak, when you talk about um, how the defensive matchup. But I think Ryan Nielsen has the the capabilities because he's talking about running that multiple defense. And I think that Hawkins is going to have some – he's going to get some playing time because we think about teams running that three that big nickel look with having three safeties in the game, at you know, at, in, from time to time, and specifically on – on pass rush downs, I'm sorry, on, on, on run downs, on run specific downs, because, you know, a lot of teams come out in those, you know, spread formations, and, and then you got to be able to defend that because a lot of times they come out in that spread formation, they're going to run the football. And we know that Jalen Hawkins has no issues with coming downhill and, and making tackles. So I, I think that that's kind of where his role is. I think that's the, the type of effect that base is going to have. But when you have him coming into that room like that, I really think that, you know, the lofty expectations are going to be there, and they should be there. Like being that you know, sixteen million dollars annually is a lot of money, so I, I think that you know Jesse Bates has a lot on his shoulders to make sure this DB room gets right. And I think that they're on their way because that Ryan Nielsen is an intense guy, and everybody knows that, and he's ex put that on display even in OTAs, and we ain't even put the pads on yet. So I think you know Hawkins will be fine. It's just I just feel like he won't be, you know, out there. You know, uh, in the, when when they start on first down, you know, and then there's more than likely he'll be there. He'll be there. He'll be out there on the yeah. field. He just won't be playing as much. 
Right. And with Jalen Hawkins, as you mentioned, he's a guy who didn't mind open field tackles in his three years. Every year he increased the number of tackles and even forced fumbles. So just having a mindset, of course, you always want the DBs to have ball hawking skills as far as the passing game. But you also want to know that if a runner gets past that first level, gets to the second level, that you've got some DBs that are saying, yeah, you're not going to get to the third level. Or if the receiver is able to catch a ball, you're not going to get a lot of yards after the catch. So yeah, there are definitely ways that Jalen Hawkins can make himself valuable in this system, regardless of if the number of snaps is reduced as well as his role is reduced, meaning not necessarily being a starter, all things considered positive that Jesse Bates is going to get that position and actually stays healthy for the entire season. Now, another guy that actually piqued my interest and I thought, hmm, Falcons also made a lot of moves uh, in the linebacker core as well. I mean, it was everywhere. Let's just be honest. But Michael Walker was another one that I thought, hmm, wonder what all of the moves in the offseason are going to do in terms of who he is, because he's one who we can recall last year, Dean Pease being really excited about both Michael Walker and Jalen Hawkins as it relates to that leadership piece, that communication piece, sort of being like that quarterback, for lack of a better term, on the defensive side. How do the moves that the Falcons have made in the offseason possibly if at all impact Michael Walker oh it's going to impact him a lot because <laughs> you know when, when you think about you know what you know Troy Anderson is they really feel like he's going to be the guy that step up to be that, you know, that mainstay on that on that defense is specifically on passing downs and in whatever base formation that they do run out there you know if they if they do run that three four base look which is Probably is not going to be much if they do. I can see Michael Walker standing next to Troy Anderson, potentially, maybe. But like you said, when you have a guy like Caden Ellis, I know a lot of people looking at those seven sacks, but the dude was standing up a lot, you know, and, and the Falcons was running him out there at that stand-up linebacker spot in a nickel um, nickel spot, a nickel um, position. So those are some of the things that you have to pay attention to. Like, I really feel like Michael Walker is going to be in a space where he's going to be fighting to, you know, to for playing time. And, and depending on how things play out during training camp, is a possibility that he might get cut? Because, you know, like there, there may be some situations that he might not be seeing the field. And when you have a guy like you don't see a, a spot for him, you know, is he going to be willing to play special teams? Like yeah. there, may, there may not be a look that he's willing to go or where, he, where he's willing to go. So I, I think that it's going to be very interesting to see once they put the pads on, because uh, even Arthur Smith even mentioned it. He's like, you, he said, guys, you make the team in August, you know, when they report. You know what I mean? Like when they put the pads on, that's when you make the team. You don't make, you, you know, you don't solidify your spot in June in, in minicamp and OTAs. And like, cause, and, and I'm glad that he brought that up because when you th talk about learning, putting guys in certain spots, you know, challenging them to do different things and, and because you want to get those type of learning experiences out the way. So once July hits and you guys report, put those pads on, you know, get those couple of days of adjustment period, then put those pads on like you want to hit the ground rolling. And I think that Michael Walker is going to have to figure out what that role looks like as he goes through this offseason program. And I'd be very interested to see how it is, because I think well, we, we've talked to Michael Walker through his time here, you know, with the Atlanta Falcons. And I think that the guys has good head on his shoulders. He's a solid football player. So um, hopefully that doesn't mean the end of, uh, of the Michael Walker area, arrow with the Falcons. But, you know, I am interested to see how this does play, play out. Indeed. Yeah, he, he was one who, like you said, we've been kind of rooting for him from day one because we've had so yeah. many opportunities to kind of speak with him. And he definitely had some moments. He definitely had some moments, especially in his second year. So I, I really am hopeful that somehow, some way, Ryan Nielsen is able to figure out how to fit him into the defense it's a crowded linebacker room it's a crowded db room it's just crowded rooms all the way around but that actually should bode well for the falcons because to arthur smith's point that means we are going to see a high level of competition when you get into training camp and when you start getting into those now critical preseason games to see who is actually going to fit the part so that they're ready for that season opener at Mercedes-Benz. So if you guys have thoughts on where you think Jalen Hawkins is going to land, is he going to have his reps reduced? Could he possibly be a viable competitor for the starting position to Jesse Bates? And what will Michael Walker do? Will he be able to find his way into a starting type space uh, in the defensive front for the Falcons come 
opening day. Let us know, like you always do. Just drop something in our comments on our YouTube page and continue to check us out every day or continue to support us. And of course, you got a weekend coming up. Why not download us wherever you download the rest of your podcasts? You can listen to today's episode and you can listen to all episodes. Just run it back. Just have yourself a Locked On Atlanta, ATL Day Ones type of binge watch, binge listen situation because we appreciate you guys for rocking with us and any and everybody that you tell to do the same.